Good morning. Today is the second Sunday of Easter, also known as Mercy Sunday. Our opening hymn is Jesus is Risen. Jesus is risen, let us sing praise to the everlasting King. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise him in song, ye seraphim. Praise him with joy, ye cherubim. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. This past weekend of the celebration of Easter, we renewed our baptismal faith and commitments. And as we move through this week toward this coming weekend's liturgy, we experience the challenges in our or to our beliefs. And as we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we should acknowledge that believing is definitely not the same as knowing. It is deeper than that. And we, we bump into our own quiet questions about the real meaning of our lives and whether suffering is worth anything to and for anybody else. Believing is not a feeling either. Just like human love, it goes beyond feelings. And we can pray with our doubts. They are holy invitations. We can pray with our arrogance, which moves us to think that we should be able to figure out ev everything out. And we can pray with our desire, desire to, to feel secure in what we absolutely know and how we often live beyond what we grasp tightly for security. And as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins, failures, and neglects, and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory 
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very reoccurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what fund they have been washed, by whose spirit they've been reborn, by whose blood they've been redeemed through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day, they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, 
mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. the builders rejected has become the cornerstone by the Lord has this been done it is wonderful in our eyes this is the day the Lord has made let us be glad and rejoice in it give thanks to the Lord reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith, to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him. You rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. 
On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. The second Sunday of Easter is also known as the Divine Mercy Sunday. And on my left hand side, we have the Divine Mercy image. Those of you who come to our Adoration Chapel know that this image is on the wall and for the purpose of our celebration we brought the image and is with us during uh, this uh, celebration the divine mercy image is a depiction of jesus based on a vision that Saint Faustina had in 1931. And there have been a, a number of paintings made of this image. The original, though not the most popular one today, is shown here. And so the basic explanation of the image is Jesus is shown in the most uh, versions of as rising, rising his right hand in a in blessing and pointing with his left hand on his chest, from which flow forth two rays. One red and one white. So the depictions often contains the, the message. Jesus 
I trust in you. And the rays streaming out have a symbolic meaning. Red for the blood of Jesus, which is the life of souls and pale for the water which justifies souls. And this is from diary of St. Faustina. So the whole image, the whole image is symbolic of charity, forgiveness, and love of God referred to as the fountain of mercy. So that's why we have this image uh, present with us during this uh, celebration. And at the end of the mass, we will have an exposition of the blessed sacrament with the, the chaplet of divine mercy. If any of you have had twins or no parents who have had twins, you can imagine what a double joy and a double challenge they must be. And even those of you who have not had twins, after rejoicing and, and wrestling with one or a two-year-old child all day long, and finally nailing, nailing him or her into bed at night, you probably say, thank God there is not two of you. My energy only goes so far. And I bring that up because the gospel seems to go out of the way to point out to us that Thomas was a twin. And I often wonder, I often wonder why they threw that detail in. Maybe his twin was one of the more well-known people in the early community. And that's why his being a twin is mentioned. But we don't know who this other twin was. That's all speculation. We really don't know. But none of this explains the real reason that the gospel writer made a point of mentioning that Thomas was a twin. There is another reason that's more profound to the question, who is Thomas' twin? And the answer between the lines is evidently meant to be us. We are Thomas' twin. For all of us, all of us, are a mixture of fear and doubt, pessimism and trust, belief and unbelief. And that's a difficult place to be because for every one of us, our human condition 
has such a hankering for, for certainty. And we see this even in the science. Look what's happening now. Scientists all over the world are rushing to develop a vaccine that would help us with our current crisis. A vaccine that would make us stronger and perhaps so we could resist this dreadful virus. But as urgent as the desire to know is in everybody, I think it trebles when we deal with life and human relationships. For us, it would be expressed this way. If only I had the certainty of some sign, what kind of certainty? Well, a sign, for example, that there is a God. I am not sure there is. I am not positive there isn't. I don't know it. I say I believe it, but wouldn't it be nice to have an unmistakable sign that there is God? Wouldn't it be nice to know for certain that it's going to be all right in the end? That this whole pandemic, the closures of churches, you unable to, to join me in the celebration of the Eucharist. And we have this notion. Wouldn't it be nice to know for certain that's going to be all right in the end? With all of the nonsense and, and hardships and, 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 and difficulty of life, wouldn't it be good to know that it's going to be all right? And I think a lot of us could put up with much more if we only knew at the end it's going to be all right. And friends, this, it would be, uh, we would like to be certain, of course, that we really count to somebody in this world that no matter what happens, there is somebody who loves us with a deep and unconditional love. We want to be the apple, the sun, the moon of somebody's eye. If we had that as a certainty, we could put up with an awful lot, couldn't we? But you know what? The reason that we are making this celebration of the Eucharist available to you is because this is my way of saying to you, you matter. I love you. And it's going to be okay. 
because we are in this thing together. But this is nice for us to connect. But the fact is that we sometimes don't have that certainty. And I know that the longer this pandemic and this dreadful pandemic goes on, it's almost like we become Thomas Twin. And what does the scripture say about that condition? Well, as usual, the scripture does not give us a direct answer. It leaves room for faith. But we get in this gospel at least some hints and approaches. Some commentary about dealing with uncertainty. And one of the more obvious commentaries in the gospel, again, we can read between the lines, is that Thomas was absent. Now, there could have been many reasons why he was absent. After all, his, his band had just broken up. His leader was captured and horribly crucified. Everything, everything that he believed in, everything that he had given himself to, has collapsed. And I am sure that many of you feel the same. As we are uncertain, we don't know what's going to happen. And I am sure he must have been depressed, like many of us are. I would presume he wanted perhaps to be alone. But even though the gospel sympathizes, with that, it at once makes a sharp commentary. The fact is, he missed out. The fact is, not being part of the church, of the church of fellowship, Thomas missed out. And that's always a mistake. You see, that's why it is important for us to be connected. And thank God for the modern technology. Thank God for the ability to stream our liturgy. Thank God for the television. Why it's important? Because we are connected. You are not being left out. And even though perhaps Thomas was depressed and withdrawn and shattered, he should not have left the fellowship because he could never find his way by himself. And that's for sure. That's why we have one another. That's why we pray for one another. That's why we have morning liturgies. We have morning prayer followed by morning mass. So Thomas had, had to have some kind of faith. And faith is, is gained and shared and matured 
in fellowship. That's why it's important to be connected. Faith is doubt positioned in hope. And where does hope come from? It comes from other people. All of us. All of us have our doubts. But to cope with them, we need each other. We need to support each other. And so, doubt, the truth is that doubt is often a sign of spiritual earnestness. We have to believe that. Doubt is a sign of spiritual earnestness. At least you are struggling. The Bible is filled with famous doubters from Job to Jonah. And all of us, all of us have cause to doubt. And when does doubt become most severe? Well, obviously in tragic times, like we are experiencing at the present time. You know, and at times people are tempted to say, look, I go to church, I used to go to church every Sunday. I keep my commandments. I say my prayers. How could God let this to happen? And that's where the doubt really comes in. After all, I've I've done everything for you, God. You turn around and do this to us. And even though that's a kind of childish relationship to to, to God, doubt is strong. And perhaps, but what the scripture is saying is that having such doubts is understandable because like Thomas, in everybody's life, we experience the absent Christ. There is nothing wrong with that and nothing to be ashamed of. It's a reality of all relationships. But the scripture again is strong and challenging because it says that we, like Thomas, must remain in or return or be connected with our faith community. That's why I emphasize it's so important that we are connected. And Thomas, like Thomas, we must remain connected and there we too must cry out, my Lord, and my God, even when that's more of a question than it is a statement. Now, every Christian, every Christian is at a different place in life's journey on this pilgrimage of ours. And there are some up front who have 
never flinched and have always carried the banner, Jesus Christ is Lord. And they have never wavered from the time they were born until the time they die. Well, good for them. Then there is another ex extreme in the back, trailing up, not sure that they should even be in this parade to begin with. And I guess the vast majority of us are in the middle. We waver between moving up front and then going back. But no matter, no matter where we are in our pilgrimage, and it's perfectly all right to be of strong faith or weak faith. The important thing is simply to be on the pilgrimage at all. That's a sign of vitality. And that's a sign of that earnestness of which I spoke. It is a sign I haven't, like Thomas, just absented myself and withdrawn because then I really will go wrong. So stay connected with your friends, with your family, even if it means to be just on the phone or FaceTime or on the computer, whatever means you have to do that. Stay connected. And I need the witness and I need the discernment of others. I could not survive in my faith, in my religion, or this Catholic Church, this pandemic, without you. I need you. I hope you cannot survive without one another. Wherever we are in the parade. So this is a gospel. This is a gospel about us. And I think that is precisely why the question was raised. In a little parenthesis, it says, Thomas was a twin. And it leaves us with this question. Who is that twin? Well, to, to paraphrase uh, the Pogo, <clears throat> we must have met him and he is us. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, as men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance of the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. In the life of the world to come. Amen. The risen Christ brought his peace to the apostles as he showed them his pierced hands and side. Let us pray confidently in his name, knowing that he brings true peace through his victory over death. For the church, that as the body of the risen Christ here on earth, God's Holy Spirit may guide us in proclaiming the truth and hope of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. For peace and justice in the world, may Easter grace be with all nations and peoples and turning away from division, let us pray to the Lord. For those who struggle each day to make ends meet, may God grant them a spirit of fortitude, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have been reborn in the waters of baptism or joined us at the table of the Lord this Easter season, may the risen Christ be their rock and their guide. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, may they share with the saints the reward of eternal joy. And we pray in a special way for the repose of the souls of Art and Helen Santelli, Vincent Duprat, May Canelli, Kevin Shea, Edna Williams, Rose and Leon Sear, Alice Sorrell, Frank Graham, and Ducky. For the repose of their souls, let us pray to the Lord. And in silence now, let us add our own personal intentions. For all of our intentions, we pray to the Lord. And we continue our prayers for frontline health workers and all essential service personnel. May their dedication inspire us to new levels of generous service and neighborly care. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for all whose mental health is jeopardized by isolation and confinement. May the support of family and friends help them cope with, with this challenge. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our and we pray for one another. May we find new ways to pray, be connected in faith, and celebrate this Easter season like no other. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that the divine mercy may bring peace and, and healing to our world. For that, let us pray to our Mother Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death, amen. Father of infinite mercy, we do not see your Son, but we love him and offer our prayers in his name. We rejoice because we believe in him who lives and reigns forever and ever.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to allow you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life, and therefore overcome with paschal joy. Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. In song, let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Mitchell, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, Saint Elizabeth of Hungary, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At 
the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
please join me in the reciting prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Two announcements that today at 10 o'clock you will hear the bells, church bells, and this is to keep our spirits up, to make sure that we are in solidarity throughout the diocese. And in the course of the week, every day, at three o'clock in the afternoon to honor the people who are on the front line, the nurses, doctors, first responders, volunteers, teachers, to honor them in a very special way. Uh, you will also hear the church's bells, and this is done throughout the diocese. And let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. My Lord Jesus Christ, who because of your love for your people, remain night and day in the Blessed Sacrament, full of pity and of love, awaiting, calling, and welcoming all who come to visit you. I believe that you are present here on the altar. I adore you, and I thank you for all the graces you have bestowed on me, especially for having given me yourself in this sacrament, for having given me your most Holy Mary Mother to plead for me, for having called us to visit you in this church. I now salute your most loving heart. And that for three ends. First, in thanksgiving for all this great gift. Secondly, to make amends to you for all the outrages committed against you in this sacrament by your enemies. Thirdly, I intend by this 
visit to adore you in all the places on earth in which you are present in the blessed sacrament and in which you are least honored and most abandoned my Jesus I love you with all my heart and I am very sorry for having so many times offended your infinite goodness with the help of your grace I purpose never to offend you again and now unworthy though I am I consecrate myself to you without reserve I renounce and give entirely to to you my will my affection my desires and all that I possess for the future dispose of me and all I have as you please and all I ask of you is your holy love final perseverance and that I may carry out your will perfectly I recommend to you the souls in purgatory especially those who had the greatest devotion to the Blessed Sacrament and to the Blessed Virgin Mary I also recommend to you all poor sinners finally my dear Savior I unite all my desires with the desires of your most loving heart and I offer them thus united to the Eternal Father and beseech him in your name and for love of you to accept and grant them amen the Divine Mercy Chaplet in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit amen. you expired Jesus but the source of life which gusts forth for souls and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O font of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Eternal Father, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. 
for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father. I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 
have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy, mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. And let us pray. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen.
And if you can, please join me in reciting the divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus and the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be Jesus and the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, virgin and mother. Blessed be the name of Mary, virgin and mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Just a reminder before our uh, final song that uh, please join us during the week for our morning prayer. It starts at 7.30 a.m., followed by uh, the uh, liturgy of the Eucharist. So please uh, join us. <laughs>